We're at the Duke Lemur Center in Durham, North Carolina, one of the foremost lemur research facilities in the world. The Duke Lemur Center is home to the world's largest colony of endangered primates, including more than 250 lemurs. Lemurs are naturally found only in Madagascar, yet sadly, most species are now listed as endangered or threatened. As primates, lemurs genetically are surprisingly close to humans, and therefore the research projects being pursued at the Duke Lemur Center, such as the relationships between hypothyroidism, metabolism, coma-like states, and sleep patterns, have very real implications for humans. We are front and center a conservation facility, mm -hmm. so what we are about is conserving and protecting these animals. but very closely allied to that is understanding their biology mm -hmm. and because they're primates and uh, therefore relatively closely related to humans there's a power in the biological understanding of these animals that you wouldn't get from a mouse colony for example Just, yeah. their evolutionary diversity is spectacular including the fact that we have the world's only hibernating primate here the dwarf lemur all of our research is of a benign nature, so that at the end of the day, the lemur goes back to its home group and, you know, no harm is done. You know, they get to live in this spectacular environment, protected yeah. from predators, protected from disease, and we learn a lot. Uh, it's just a win-win. Nice. So happy to have with us one of the founders, uh, Dr. Peter Klopfer, who is also a professor of biology. That a little lemur hibernates for up to six months of the year, going into torpor down to five degrees Celsius, where there is presumably no brain activity. Well, you know, if you have to have delta rhythms, uh, and if this is true for all primates, how do these little guys uh, survive six months of inactivity? We realized, gee, we've got these animals right here at Duke. Maybe we could get the answer to that question. And of course, because of the genetic similarities between these animals and ourselves, we figured that uh, whatever genetic machinery is involved in hibernation in these animals, it, it might be part of our repertoire too. For me, the, the starting point has been an interest in this, you know, enduring question about the function of sleep. And, you know, we sleep a third of our lives and yet we really have very limited understanding about why we do it, what it's for, what the biological functions of sleep might be, whether hibernators sleep and, and how much and to what degree, and, and actually whether even sleep and hibernation are distinct states has not really been fully fleshed out. And when the opportunity arose, uh, that Peter mentioned that there was an animal here that hibernated and in fact is the closest genetic relatives to humans that hibernates. You know, I became very excited about the idea of, of just simply asking, do these animals sleep uh, in order to make it through their hibernation period. But interestingly, in humans, there is a coma state where people who, who are extremely hypothyroid go into a coma, and there they have loss of the brain waves, like you have in more like what we expect we're seeing in these animals during their hibernation. Kathy, tell us a little bit about the, the connection with the lemurs and humans and, and why it's so important to study the lemur. We're learning a lot more all the time, and there's a lot that we don't know, certainly, and that's what we're trying to learn here, but that there are, in fact, quite a few similarities. They get many of the same diseases that we do. A lot of animals that, that as they get older, develop certain kinds of cancers. Interestingly, conditions such as kidney disease and diabetes are also occurring in the aging lemur population and are allowing researchers to closely observe, monitor, and study. These discoveries are bringing insight into our own relationships with these diseases. We are now able to apply genetic tools so that we can, for example, a lot of the nocturnal species like the mouse lemurs, if you hold one mouse lemur species in your hand and another on the other hand, you really couldn't tell them apart by looking at them. But if you look at their genetics, they're so deeply diverged, it's wow. astonishing. And people are just out there learning more, understanding more, and therefore able to make stronger statements about biological diversity. Nice. Um, so again, it's this wonderful feedback loop between research and conservation because the more we know about species diversity, the more we can say, hey, this particular forest mm -hmm. is critical mm -hmm. because it houses X number of species rather than just one. Then one has a much stronger argument to make uh, for protecting that forest. Nice. 
The Duke Lemur Center is also involved in a reintroduction program to return lemurs to Madagascar, easing pressure in genetically limited areas and offering a lawful means to protect the lemurs. An education center was established there as well, training thousands of Malagasy people. The Duke Lemur Center, research, understanding, and conservation.